The good times keep on coming in 2020. Yes, they do. Hey everybody, Alex here. And now that I've cleaned up all the Diet Coke that literally just dripped all over the desk and the switch and everything else trying to do that stupid intro. Hey, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the third episode of I Still Don't Know What the Hell to Call This. I think I'm just going to go with like whatever the heck it is that we're discussing or whatever I do decide to title it. Um... What's been going on? So, obviously, we just had this crazy hurricane um, that brought itself up north uh, to the New York area and surrounding Tri-State. And unfortunately, there was some significant damage. Uh, luckily for me, um, it wasn't to the degree of Hurricane Sandy, uh, where they actually had to redo some of the facade of the building because it literally knocked bricks off the wall of my building. Uh, unfortunately, we did have some car damage, uh, not my car, but just some cars. I have a photo here, and if I can't recall if uh, you could see the license plate, but if you can, I obviously took it out. And that's been a common sight in my neighborhood since I live very close to a park. Really, really unfortunate. Um, and then we had a power outage on top of it, not during the hurricane. Uh, but this morning, as I'm recording this on August the 7th, and there's construction outside. I give up. I just fucking give up. But we had a power outage at about 5 o'clock this morning. All along the upper part of Manhattan. Uh, upper East Side, West Side. I think a little bit of the Bronx too. And of course I'm up at that time. So I'm literally sitting in the living room playing uh, Chasm on the Switch. And everything just goes... <clears throat> and everything goes off. But I'm playing it handheld so who cares. And I'm like... ah. I blow, I blow the fuse all the time. But then I think about it, I'm like, I, haven't ha I don't have anything on. I have the light, and I have the switch, and it's handheld. So I go over to the fuse box, but I can't see anything. So I open up the hallway door to the, uh, where, you know, to leave my apartment, because that's where the switch, that's where the uh, fuse box is for me. And it's pitch black. And then, so, of course, at four in the morning, what's the most logical thing to do? I decide to wake up my girlfriend, being like, the power's out! Don't open the freezer! Because we literally just got groceries, so... A bunch of salmon and everything. Luckily, nothing went bad. Uh, Consolidated Edison managed to fix it uh, within, like, 20, 30 minutes. And I got to see the lights just go back on. And this is, like, the third power, like, mass blackout I've honestly seen happen. Um, some of you may remember, if you were in the Northeast or if you live in New York, there was a huge blackout... I think in like 2004 and at the time i was playing star wars galaxies and i was living in my parents house some 2003 something like that and i was playing star wars galaxies and all of a sudden the internet went out and i was like oh okay so i i don't know what happened maybe it was the power brick i had on the computer i just thought okay the internet's out and i left my apartment and i lived on the 16th floor so I took the elevator downstairs. The second I get off the elevator, all the lights, doom. I could have been stuck in that elevator for like three days. How fucking strange. And I'm walking around. I don't realize the power's out. I just think like something's off in the building. And I see people running around the street like loonies. And then I hear there's a huge New York blackout. And the power was out for several days. And I lived high enough uh, on the 16th floor that we didn't get water pressure up there. So, if you made number two, you got to deal with number two for a couple of days. You made number one, you got to smell number one and number two for a couple of days. Forget bathing. <laughs> it was bad. And all the food in the fridge, gone. Absolutely gone. And we had the dog. So imagine me walking the dog, going down 16 flights up, 16 flights down. The dog literally wouldn't piss or shit. He would hold it. He was like, I am not dealing with this. And after three days, he finally relieved himself in the living room. But it was bad. We were, But it was bad, but it was kind of fun. Because looking back at it, you know, I really, I only played MMOs at the time. So I really wasn't playing games. But uh, my parents and I, we, I had a radio that was, uh, you know, it was a, a replica of like an old, like, aviator radio. So we sat there and we listened to, uh, we just listened to the radio and they basically just talked about how they were literally like the only thing still working. Um, and then a few days following that, with the last bit of juice in my cell phone, I called up my friend, uh, Pat, 
and we decided we were going to walk to his house uh, or his mom's house because she lived on the ground floor and she had water pressure and I was going to bring clothes and take a shower because I smelled like ass. So we're walking from my house, which was on the lower part of Manhattan, and he lived, his mom lived on the upper part of Manhattan. So we're talking like a four hour walk because there's no transportation, forget cabs, it's a mess. There's no traffic lights. So about halfway there, because we're dumb, we both stop at a red light. And then after about three more blocks, it clicks in our heads, wait a minute, there's power. So we did anything. We did the one thing that any self-respecting person would do, and we went to Subway, and we both got footlongs with double meat, never mind the fact that our fridge literally just turned on, so that meat could have been rancid for all I know. And we had a, we had a blast. And I went to his, parent, his mom's house, I took a shower, and then I walked home, and then I found out we still didn't have power back at my parents' house. So I had to take up all those flights, but we got it, I think, later that night, or if not the next morning. This was only half an hour. Some people I know in New Jersey still don't have power in some parts of New, uh, upstate New York, and they said they're not getting it back until, like, Monday. Which, whew, it's quite it's, it's quite a thing. So today, if the shirt of the day doesn't really tell you, uh, we're going to be doing the Super Nintendo. And uh, I'm going to do as much of a thorough overview of this collection as possible. Uh, I haven't played everything. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Some games have stories. Some just look cool. Some I found on a deal knowing they were worth something. But I, if I don't know anything about it, I don't know anything about it. And uh, I'm going to break it up into sections. So the first section I'm going to do is hardware because I'm not bringing all that shit out here. I do have a Super Nintendo, the original one, um, with uh, I used uh, HD RetroVision uh, component, composite, whichever the one it is, cables, originally. And uh, actually, this Super Nintendo, it's not my childhood one. It's one I bought when I started-ish on YouTube, and it was a Christmas gift to myself. And you know what? I, I still have the video. So I'll put it up here, and we, we can all throw up a little bit to see how bad it is. Really got off my lazy ass and bought myself a Super Nintendo. And it's not piss yellow, thank God. Ugh. All right, anyway, um, <laughs> so I used that for a bit with uh, standard Super Nintendo controllers and I played it using the regular cables for the longest time on this TV that's sitting next to me that you can't see until I got the HD RetroVision ones and I moved it into the living room. Um, from there, I eventually upgraded, upgraded to the Apidu wireless controller. I have the original model, the one that literally looks like a Super Nintendo controller. And I don't think they can actually produce those anymore due to a lawsuit. I know that the newer ones have better, more consistent firmware, but this one really, it does have sync issues, I'll say. Sometimes it takes a while to sync up, even if it's charged or plugged in or what have you. But for the most part, it works great. And then eventually I got an analog NT. So now the Super Nintendo you saw, I think two videos ago, that is the YouTube Super Nintendo. It sits up there like in a display. And uh, <laughs> somebody pointed this out, so I'm just gonna mention it. Yes, they were originally in chronological order. The N64 is boxed, so that is in the closet because it doesn't fit up there. And the reason why the Saturn comes after the Dreamcast is because I have the, the other Dreamcast outside with the mode and it's just easier for me to grab the Saturn that way. Um, but that really does it for the hardware perspective. I don't have a Super Game Boy. I used to have one, but I really just, handheld is handheld to me. I like the intimacy of it, I guess. So that's really, I don't have a Super Scope because who cares, at least for me. Uh, and I have the shirt. Now, if you're as old as I am, you may remember <laughs> uh, going to school and using actual books. Um, so to that extent, I have an assortment of Super Nintendo related books uh, from various different authors. And I will have some beef, some B-roll up that I'll interlace here for a more thorough walkthrough. But I do have this book here from Bitmap Books, uh, the Super Nintendo Box Art Collection. This was probably one of the first um, Super Nintendo books I bought, and pretty much because the Famicom 
at least the box art, always tended to be better uh, than the US version. And I tend to really enjoy these things because for me, this is what I grew, with, grew up with. And even when I got into importing and everything else, um, here it goes. Oh, you hear that thud? Um, when I got into importing and stuff, these were the games I got to look at. And I was like, why are the boxes shaped like VHS games and stuff like that? Uh, to that extent, too, I also have the unofficial Super Nintendo Famicom uh, Visual Compendium. This is another book from Bitmap Books, and you'll see there's a, a lot of this stuff is repeated, but this is a little bit more of a, I guess you could say like a coffee table book design, while the Famicom one, while a coffee table book, is more about one thing. This is about several different things. And um, I have several of the Bitmap Books, and I really like them. I think they're very well made. Man, these studs. Uh, this one doesn't really need much of an introduction at all, if you know who Pat the NES Punk is. Uh, he did one of these for the uh, Nintendo, uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and he did one for the Super Nintendo. I think he's doing another one for the Game Boy. I think these books are really good because each game has a mini review in it, uh, which makes it really fun, and they're not all reviewed by him. They're reviewed by different people, so you do get a different perspective of everything. Be warned, though, if you do want to buy this particular book, it is, it is not cheap, uh, and it's also a freaking mountain, um, as you can see going on here, but it is a very well-made book. And then finally, this one I backed on Kickstarter. I think I also backed Pat's, uh, or I purchased it from his website. I can't remember. So this one is the Super Nintendo Anthology, and this one is from Geek's Line. And this book is really cool because uh, the perk I went with on Kickstarter was one book is dedicated to hardware and one book is dedicated to software. Obviously the hardware book's a little bit less because it's really just a bunch of schematics. But stuff like that I have always found to be really interesting and I do from time to time flip through these books just to get acclimated or reacclimated with the system. And arguably the Super Nintendo is one of my favorite consoles of all time. It's, I, it has a lot of nostalgic value. Uh, to it for me, which is really why I have all these wacky books. Uh, unfortunately, the Sega Saturn doesn't get the same treatment. Um, but if you are looking into any of these books or there's another system or um, uh, an IP you're looking into, uh, Geek's Line has a lot of great books with their console uh, editions. Pat's books are really good. And then Bitmap Bureau does a bunch of different ones. They've done one on the Nintendo, the Master System, uh, they've done one on CRPGs, they've done one on point and click adventures. They're all extremely well done. Now I'm gonna break this into sections the best I can. Once again, I have not played all of these. Um, so if I really have nothing to say or I don't have a story, you're just gonna see what it is. The Great Battle 4. So this is essentially Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider, uh, Kamen Rider uh, Gundam and Ultraman. Each of the Great Battle games is like a spin-off of something else. So I think it was the first one was a top-down isometric thing. And then eventually we get to a, um, a Wild Gun spin-off. And then I think this one, if I remember, is the, is the side-scrolling platformer one. And uh, you use them in a way, they all have different abilities. So I would say it's kind of like the Lost Vikings thing, but not so much of a puzzle thing. Pretty fun game, though. I think it's this one. I have two of them, so I may be confusing them. Uh, Ninja Kun. Uh, this was really because of Kid Shoryuken. Gogo Ackerman 3. Uh, also because of Kid Shoryuken. This I actually found at Book Off for like $5 the day after he put up a video on it, which I thought was really funny. Now this game I honestly don't know the name of or remember the name of it, but this is a shoot 'em up that I heard about through Kid Kiss Pico, Chris Pico, the old ass retro gamer. Uh, this has a basic shoot 'em up in it, but you can actually build your own, which I thought was pretty cool. It's, it, it's very rudimentary. It, it, it's intense for the time, but looking back at like all these different tools we have with like RPG Maker and VN Maker, it's I mean different genres of course, but it's a little archaic, but still really cool for the time period. And uh, I should mention, uh, some of you guys may this may come up later. My rule when it comes to finishing games, uh, since I do use an EverDrive, if I were to beat, we'll say, Thrashia 776, uh, the Fire Emblem game, 
I actually will not uh, put it as finished on my backloggery or mention it in a video just as a point of practice, unless I own a legitimate version of it somehow, whether it's digital or physical, that's my rule. Um, so if I, which is why sometimes I just forget about games I beat because I just, I don't own something of it. And then all of a sudden they show up. Now I have a very strange Bomberman fetish. Uh, ultimately I would say they're all the same, uh, but they're really not. Each one offers a little bit more. And these games tend to be, we never got these over here, unfortunately. We only got up to the second game. And honestly, if you played one, you played them all, you can kind of figure it out, I'd say. Of course you miss out on the silly story, but these games tend to go for like $20 each on eBay. And one day when I was at Book Off, somebody literally traded, traded in their entire Fam, Super Famicom collection, and those three games were in it as well as Parodius Da, I think this is Da, and Super, uh, Super Bonk, which I, this isn't really that expensive on the Super Famicom. I think Super Bonk in the NTSC, or at least at the time, uh, was more expensive. So I was really happy to find that because I really do enjoy, I think it's PC Genjin, I think is the pronunciation. Like I, like fuck, like I know what I'm talking about. Here's Johnny. My fucking God, do I have a lot of games. Okay, so, so what we're gonna do is I'm basically gonna unveil myself as we go through this. Obviously these are all card only, they're all NTSC. Same thing applies, if I have something to say about it, I will. Um, and uh, after this, we'll go through the stuff I actually have boxed. All right, so start. Super Turrican, one of my favorite games of all time. If you love Euro shooters, if you've ever played Gunlord, this is the granddaddy of them all. Excellent soundtrack by Chris Holzbeck. I do not own the second one. I will never own the second one physically. However, a digital copy of Tur Super Turrican 2 did come on the Analog NT. So I do technically own it. And if I finish it, I can talk about it. Turtles in Time. I, I really don't need to say much about this. I played this to death as a kid. And one day I was actually on my way to an after work party uh, from, I think it was two hotels ago, I think. And uh, I had to walk my book off to get to the bar where I was meeting everybody. I was a little early, I decided to pop in. And they had this for like 30 or 40 bucks at the time. And that was a steal. So I grabbed it. I show up at the bar, literally just holding this in my hand. Everyone's like, you just walk around Super Nintendo games? Super Punch-Out. Uh, this was by far one of my most rented games and most played games uh, when I used to travel with my parents when they used to work a lot and um, hotels used to have the uh, Super Nintendo built into the TV. Always play Punch-Out. That was always my game and admittedly to this day, it's still one of my favorite games. I actually didn't own a physical copy of it for the longest time uh, up until GameStop started carrying retro games. Then that's when I, I got a bunch of these titles because they used to have discount codes that all stacked together. Which is how I ended up with Kirby's Dream Course. I fucking hate this game. But it's oddly addictive. Kirby's Avalanche, same story here. This is essentially a Puyo Puyo game. If you're into Puyo Puyo, definitely look into this one. The Lost Vikings, a perennial classic from um, the folks at Blizzard. I originally heard about this in Nintendo Power when I was a kid, and it looked really cool, and I never played it until I started on YouTube. Firepower 2000. This is a shooter from Sunsoft, if I remember correctly. I haven't played it yet, though. This motherfucker. This thing. I was looking for too many games with Steven this past year like you would not believe. And everybody had it for a stupid price I was not willing to pay. And eventually I actually found it on GameStop. I used all the discount codes and it literally dropped to like 30 bucks. And I was thinking, A, there's no way it's gonna come legitimate. B, it's gonna have no label. And C, it's gonna look like crap. And it showed up pristine and it's a legitimate label and it's a legitimate game. I checked the board, I was stoked. Now, as for the game itself, this is back in Konami's heyday when they were amazing, and I love Batman the Animated Series. One of my, Batman's my favorite hero, and Batman the Animated Series is one of my favorite cartoons of all time. Uh, and this game is fucking difficult, <laughs> to say the least. Um, Batman, I mean, 
there's really not much to say. Konami was just, they were hitting on all, all cylinders at this point, but this game is fucking hard. I do not think I'll ever beat it. To that point, though, Batman Returns is an excellent side-scrolling beat-em-up platformer thing based on the movie with my boy, uh, Michael Keaton and Danny DeVito. Uh, let's go over here. Mystical Ninja, well, starring Goemon, technically. These games are weird, and uh, this is, other than the ones on the N64, this is the only Mystical Ninja game I own, and I really have to attribute to the guys at My Life in Gaming and Jimmy Hoppa. Those are the ones that turned me on to it. I'm gonna do these two games together. I rented both of these games as a kid, and I bought them both from GameStop for like $9.99 each. I honestly like this game more. They're, they're really shitty beat-em-ups. Well, I think this one's a fighter, if I remember right. This one is definitely a beat-em-up. They're really, really crappy, but they're like oddly endearing. It's like a guilty pleasure thing. And I'm honestly not a Power Rangers fan now. Uh, I know a lot of people are. They've had a huge resurgence, but well, from several years ago. But I just, I don't know. I always find like something endearing. Like with the movie that came out recently, I, uh, I saw it with my girlfriend. We, we got it on demand and it honestly wasn't half bad. The original Power Rangers movie, though, Jesus fucking Christ. I even news. Link to the past. Don't really have much to say about this. Zelda 3, as the poster told me when I got my Super Nintendo. Excellent game, and I, I don't remember if I did a video on it. If I did, actually, speaking of that, if you haven't fallen asleep yet, um, I am thinking about putting up the old memory videos on, like, a playlist over time because there's a bunch of them, and it's going to take me a bit. Leave a comment below. If you'd like me to, I'll definitely do that. I've, I have everything on a hard drive, so it's literally me just killing the bandwidth for about four days. But let me know. But Link to the Past, though. Um, the, this game caused, like, such drama and torment for me because a kid in my building who was, like, king shit uh, beat the game and was a, a remark who was absolutely astounded that I wasn't able to do it. Fuck you, fuckface. Anyway, so it got beaten eventually. This game, I don't want to use the, the hidden word. It's a Sunsoft game. It's starring Porky Pig. Porky Pig is not my favorite. But the platforming actually ain't half bad. Super Mario World, don't really have much to say about that. It's, it's a good game. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, there's something wrong with you. Oh, and under the hardware, I forgot. I also have a Super Nintendo Classic. It's over there. And that is so I can say I beat Star Fox 2. Saturday Night Slam Masters. I got this from GameStop like just before they did this whole restructure thing and now everything is fucking broken and you can't tell what the inventory is at any given time. Um, I used to rent this a lot as a kid and I used to never return it a lot as a kid. Um, I think to the point where Blockbuster actually called my uncle because the account was on his credit card and they threatened to take us a small claims courts for the overlay, for the, uh, for the over, for the late fees. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Sorry about the glare. I'm trying. I'm. St I'm trying to get back in the group. This fighting game. Eh, I like the turtles. I think it's an okay fighting game. Would do you necessarily see me busting it out when I have like a nostalgia kick? Absolutely not. Operation Logic Bomb. Probably one of the worst titles for an overhead shooter in the world. Really fun though. Secret of Mana. This was a birthday gift uh, recently. Well, not recently, a couple of years ago. My One of my good friends, this is actually her childhood copy. Uh, she gave it to me for uh, my birthday because she knew I didn't physically own it. So this is gonna stick with me till the day I die, uh, pretty much. I would love to get a box to complete it. Uh, I haven't actually played Secret of Mana also to be true. To, what? To, to be honest. Um, it's on the list, it's on the list. But I would love to get a box for it because I love the, um, the case art for this. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. This was a Christmas gift from uh, Stephen the Laggy Gamer a few years ago. And it was like, he was like, I got you a game that was on your wish list. And I was like, oh, yay. He got me the, the one game I throw on my wish list as a troll. Okay. It's a good game, though. I actually beat it on a rental from Blockbuster when I was a kid. Bomberman 2. Yeah, I cleaned up with GameStop when it came to cart-only Super Nintendo games before all the stupidity happened. Maui Mar Maui Mauer Ma Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow. 
Donald Duck is like one of my favorite uh, Disney characters, second to Scrooge. And um, this game, it's weird. I can't tell if it's like Donald Duck as a ninja and they're playing it off like that or they just made this up or it's a thing somewhere. I, I actually don't know. But it's done by Disney Interactive, so it has a little bit of that like Aladdin vibe to it, like um, from the Genesis. Really good animation. The platform is okay. That, but you know, it's a Disney platformer. It's actually really good, and I don't. I know it's on GOG too. If you want a quicker way to play it, but I don't really hear anybody talk about it. It's not bad. Death and Return of Superman. I ran around too many games looking for this thing all over the place. This is a fun fucking beat 'em up. Let me tell you. Especially if you grew up during that time and place when Superman had the mullet. Actually, I think that was after, but at one point Superman had a mullet. Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. Nothing really to say about this. I never owned it as a kid. I just rented it 50 times, so I probably should have tried to buy it. Uh, got this from GameStop once again. Uh, this one I'm saving for later. Buster Bust Loose. I had this as a kid. This is arguably the best Tiny Toons game of all time. I do not care what anybody says. The levels are fun. They're diverse. The animation's outstanding. And once again, Konami in the heyday. Super Mario All-Stars. I got this at Book Off 2. I think this was 20 bucks. I don't know how much it goes for now, but at the time, 20 bucks was pretty good. Disney's Goof Troop got this at Too Many Games with uh, Steven and Dustin at our very first Too Many Games. Contra 3, uh, this is, uh, what was the subtitle? The Alien Wars, I bought this off of, if you're still watching videos, dude, uh, Mr. RPG Crazy sold this to me, actually from, I believe, I believe you're from Sweden? He sent me like a whole package of stuff I bought off of him years ago. And then, uh, honestly, this is probably my second favorite Contra game, even though I really fucking hate Contra, uh, just because it makes me so angry. Demon's Crest. I bought this on Amazon for $30, and then it got popular, and then it blew up. And I played through this, I think, last year. Really fun game. I like the exploration piece. I like the Mega Man-ness of it. But ultimately, I do not think it's worth that price uh, that it demands currently. I, I think it's a fun game. I think it's a good game. I don't think it's an amazing game, and I think it's on a pedestal, if I can be completely honest with you. Bomberman, uh, the original one. Uh, do not have the multi-tap, obviously. And I don't even think the analog, the analog doesn't even have four slots. One of my favorite Kirby games of all time. This is not my childhood copy, but I played it to death as a kid. And I, I would dare say, I can't remember uh, completely, but I would say that I 100%ed it. Tin Star, I gotta blame uh, TV and Lust on this one. This is actually a really fun sort of like shooty, wild gunsy platformery thing. Also got this off of Mr. RPG Crazy. I rented this as a kid. The Magical Quest games starring Mickey Mouse are super fun. Uh, this one, I think, in the grand scheme of the trilogy, has aged the worst. Uh, just because it feel, I feel the oldness of it now. But it's still really good. Twisted Tales of Spike McFang. This is an action RPG with a vampire who eats tomatoes. If you've played this guy before, my boy Valvatore is kind of the same thing, but he does uh, sardines. The controls are the most difficult part about this game. Um, they're not super responsive, other than that, it's really easy. And it demands a high price, I don't recommend paying it. Um, now this one, take, take One Video Game Temple in Texas. This I love. Look at that. Friggin' branded it like a goddamn cow. This is Strike Gunner STG. I got this at Too Many Games with Steven. And the funny thing about this game, it's a, it's a decent shooter. Two tables had it, and we both, we literally went from one table to another to compare the condition and the price so we could negotiate. And then eventually I just said, fuck it, and I just bought it and just walked away. Super Mario 2, Yoshi's Island. I, um, I originally bought this because I understood that it didn't work on the EverDrive, and it's since been patched, so it actually works on the EverDrive now. By the way, I have it here, and then I have it on the um, SNES Classic. Imperium. This is a... This is a pretty good shooter i'll say um unfortunately it's not the cleanest copy um i don't remember where i got this i think i got it off of amazon it's big tokai you can't go wrong even if it is bad you can't go wrong 
Sky Blazer. This, I'm so torn on this game. It's a really good platformer from Sony, which makes no sense for back then. But I also think it's overpriced nonsense. So I don't know. I, I do have to give it a more thorough playthrough before I pass judgment on it. That's another thing. A lot of these games, obviously, I haven't been able to share any silly memories of. Because a lot of them I bought just like from GameStop on when they were doing sales and all that stuff. But it's also just a lot of these, some of them tend to be pricier. And I feel like I have to play them to decide what to do with them. Like, for instance, I had a copy of Pocky and Rocky that I bought a book off for like 50 bucks and I sold it. I honestly do not like that game. <laughs> I like the character art. I like the design. I like everything else but the actual game. It makes no sense. Dragon View. This one is this one. I don't. I got this so long ago. It's a very interesting game for the way it does like the RPG mechanics, and it's a Chemco game. Which uh, ironically, they do nothing but mobile games now, and I honestly can't stand ninety nine point nine percent of them. And then finally, we have Lufia uh, and the Fortress of Doom, which is really part two, but Lufia two is part one or something along those lines. I think I got this in a trade. I'm pretty sure, but I can't remember where exactly. Spider-Man Maximum Carnage. So this, I had this game as a kid, and my friend Pat and I used to play it all the time. We both, he, if it wasn't the red cartridge, you had the wrong version. That was like pretty much the joke, because a bunch of our friends had the gray cart version, which tells you how long we were buying and playing this game. So I told them they had a copy of Book Off one day of the red cartridge. And he was in the area, so he texted me. He said, yo, meet me a book off. I'm going to go buy it. So I go to book off before him, and I pick up the cart. And I go, and I hide in the corner. And I see him go over there, and he's doing this. And I hear him go, fuck. And I pop out. I'm like, ha-ha. And he goes, oh. So, you know, I give it to him, and he buys it. And then we went to uh, another game store, and they had Maximum Carnage. And it was the same price. So he bought it there and then gave me that one. <laughs> but uh, in hindsight... Probably one of the better LGN games, and it's still not that good. But man, Maxim Carnage, that was so cool back in the day. Anyway, Final Fantasy III. This is my childhood copy that my friend Pat actually had, and I did a video on this a while back where I was helping him clean out uh, his grandparents' house because they were selling it. And um, they had a whole box of games in there. Um, you know, like My Earthbound was in there, Chrono Trigger was in there, uh, Final Fantasy III and Castlevania IV, which you'll see in a bit. Um, he kept some because I wanted him to. And then he gave this back to me, my Final Fantasy III, and it still had my save data on it. And since then, I have not popped the card in because I do not want to find out that it's dead. <laughs> and I played that game a damn long fucking time. And then finally, Joe and Mac. I loved this game as a kid. I found it at Too Many Games. My first Too Many Games was Steven and Dustin. And it was really funny because literally, I saw it and I grabbed it because the price was good. And the guy working the table really didn't know what it was. I guess he was just helping out. And he literally showed it to whoever owned the table. He's like, how much for this? And he was like, oh, like 15. I was like, keep the change. I'm out. But this is a really, really fun game. Um, it is one of those games where I think, um, you know, Data East really knocked out of the park. I know there's an arcade version, but I played this first. And when I played the arcade version, I kind of prefer the Super Nintendo version. Now, as a point of practice... I really do not like buying reproduction cards at this point. And I'm not even talking about expensive games. I'm talking about if somebody took the time to do a fan translation, a labor of love, and then somebody else decides to put it on a board for their own personal use, or put it on an EverDrive, or maybe jazz it up as a gift uh, for a friend in a, on a cart, prom, whatever, that's fine. But the idea of people selling it for their own profitability kind of grosses me out. And for the longest time, back in the day of flashback games and all that stuff, it was like the bee's knees. It was amazing. It was excellent. You know, the presentation, the quality, all that stuff was brand new. And they were fucking expensive. Now everybody does it and they're like $20. But I used to have a bunch of them, a lot of fan translations for RPGs. And I basically got rid of all of them. Because honestly, I just felt really uncomfortable about it because, you know, thinking about the, uh, the ethics behind it, it's really kind of shitty. But I kept a few only because these are the only ways I've been able to find these games legitimately working. Um, and I have two on the Super Nintendo, and I have, I think, two or three 
on the Game Boy Advance for that same particular reason. For whatever reason, they just do not work on my EverDrive, so I need to use the cart version. So first I have uh, Chrono Trigger Crimson Echoes. This is kind of a fan hack. It's basically a fan mix, I guess you could say, of uh, Chrono Trigger 2, like kind of like what happened afterwards, like an epilogue thing. It's really interesting because like the way the game starts, it kind of like breaks the fourth wall that then it kicks into it. It's actually really well done. And once again, I have not found anybody or a ROM of this that actually works. And it's really heavy. And then I also have Marvelous. Uh, this I got through Fishy Face Games. This is from the guy who does Zelda right now. So this was, I think, like his brainchild to start. I It did come with a box and a manual and all that, but the sizing was off and it didn't fit in any of the protective cases so eventually it just popped out it got crushed it got damaged and i was like yeah fuck it so it's, it's not a legitimate game anyway and um i haven't really looked up to see what a, a legitimate copy of marvelous goes for but now it works on the super nintendo classic because for the longest time this would not work on an everdrive uh because of the chips in there so i nobody wants it so i guess i'm just gonna keep it now, I also have some of these newer games uh, that were released, I guess you could say, uh, new Super Nintendo games, I guess you could say. You know, they're not, they weren't released at the time of the Super Nintendo, but some of them are pretty cool, I think. Uh, I back Sydney Hunter and the, jeez, um, oh, which one is this? And the Caverns of Death. This was Gamester Ready One's game uh, through Collector Vision. I backed to Kickstarter. It took forever and a fucking day. It eventually came. They're really, you know, a lot of people I've, I've noticed have said they don't really care for the art style because this is kind of like the Garbage Pail Kids thing. I don't think they're using that with the latest one that's on the Switch. That's the Mind Adventure. But it's actually a really fun fucking game. I got to tell you. if I don't know if they put this one on the Switch, but it's really good. Highly recommend it. Then Retrobit uh, decided to do these collections. So this one has Joe and Mac, Joe and Mac 2, which is overpriced. And then the uh, Congo, I think it's a Congo Quest? Congo's Caper, which is the unofficial third game. Obviously, it's still sealed uh, because I have an EverDrive, but I own, these are technically licensed, so they are legitimate, even if they were made in the year of our Lord, I think 2018. To that extent, I also have their Brawlers pack, uh, which has, sorry about that, uh, Rival Turth uh, Brawl Brothers, the Peacekeepers, which is an amazing beat-em-up, and tough enough same thing uh this one i think i opened because i actually played on this um these are really really fun uh beat-em-ups now i got them from castlevania games i think they're on amazon now and they're like discounted all the time because nobody really bought them and then this one at this point i was kind of like i already bought the rest of them may as well buy this one too so this one has fighter's history fighter's history i think it's dynamite side pocket magical drop magical drop too they say it's the classic collection. This is you may as well just call it the random shit collection because this there's no rhyme or reason to any of this. You have two fighting games, you have a, a billiards game, and then you have two puzzle games. And then I also have uh, is this Iron Commando? Yeah, Iron Commando. Uh, this was done through Pico Interactive, and knowing what I know now, I I, I kind of don't like the fact I bought this, but um. At the time, they were doing an Indiegogo for that game, and I had played it a bunch on the EverDrive, and I really, really liked it. And I wanted to own it. And then I found out, like, after the fact, they were going to put it on their store, and it was actually, I think, was less expensive than the Indiegogo. So I said, okay, cool. So I canceled it. And then I get an email uh, directed to me specifically asking why I canceled it. I'm like... Is it which brings up a whole other issue with Kickstarters and all that crap, but that's a video for another day. Rudy and Chronicles is doing very well, and I don't want to shit on it. And then Retrobit also did this one. I also purchased Sister Castlemania Games a while back. Uh, this is from Irem. It is... Okay, good. I have the right setup. This is R-Type uh, 3 and Super R-Type. This is the collector's box. And I'm going to show you what's inside. I think these are still available. Pretty sure. But this was a limited edition. And it's not super limited because I still see them from time to time. I just don't know what they cost. Uh, number 434 out of 1,000. But at the same time, I also have another one that is the same thing. So I'm not necessarily sure what the hell is what. But the actual packaging 
you know, it, it looks like a Super Nintendo box. It's a little bit too glossy, but it's actually really well done, I think. And this is going to be a slightly better unboxing than the, uh, the snake one, you know, because I just don't have patience for this crap. Yeah, you know what? I'm already losing my patience with this shit already. Yeah, fuck it. Should have got more Diet Coke. Mmm. Delicious. All right, so, home stretch. We're on to the boxed games now. And I tend to have a rule with box games. If it's not super cheap, it has to mean something. So if we're talking super cheap, we got this Twin B game that's a side scroller. And it's actually, it's this was a book off, it was I think $10. I didn't even remember I had this until I pulled it out of the closet. But see, this is why I really like Famicom box art. They tend to just be so much more colorful and energetic than the US box art. It's, a very, it's actually really good. I think Hitchery can did a video on that one too. Final Fantasy 2. Uh, this box has definitely seen better days, um, but I pieced it together because this is my favorite Final Fantasy game of all time. And I think I got a manual for this. Let's let's find out. I can't remember. Yep, I got a manual for it, and the whole thing is falling apart, so we're putting it right back to where I found it. It means a lot to me. I do not have one for Final Fantasy 3. I tried to do that since that is my childhood copy. No luck. Super Metroid, this is box and complete. This was probably one of the funnier things uh, this previous Too Many Games because Steven bought himself a copy of Super Metroid and then I wanted a box copy of Super Metroid. But I already had the card, so I'm like, I need to find a box. And then eventually, like, I think we left and then, like, literally the minute I got home, I bought a box off of eBay for, like, $40 or something. I was just like, I love this game so much. I used to rent it all the time. I played through it so many times. This is i don't want to say it's my favorite metroid game because i mean the genre it's my favorite metroid castlevania style game because i don't like using that combo thing dirty word it's like saying the f word that i've said four times now i'm going to put all these games together because they're an unofficial trilogy soul blazer this is box and complete i think it had a map. i think it has a map but i'm missing that um once again not the most pretty copy and I actually did not know about Soul Blazer until I got into YouTube uh, through Clan of the Grey Wolf, I think it was. Yes. Because this is part of the um, the uh, Quintet Trilogy. Oh, God, it's falling apart. Yeah, it has the manual. It has important warning info. It has no map. But this is this has definitely seen better days. And I got this several years ago. And um, nowhere near what it costs now. Uh, to say the least. But this is an action RPG with terrible translation, but it is so much fun and so endearing because it's all about death and rebirth is pretty much the, the whole cycle of this trilogy, which goes across three games. And the cool thing about it is each game kind of builds off of the previous. So you literally see them getting better as you go. And the next one to that, which we did receive, uh, was The Illusion of Gaia. Now this I do have with the Nintendo Power Handbook uh, which literally just tells you how to play the fucking game from start to finish. I used it as a kid, and it came with a sweet t-shirt that I no longer have, and I really, really wish I did because it was super comfy. And I've said it before, one of my friends, if you say Illusion of God, she goes, oh man, that fucking t-shirt was so comfy. This game is excellent, and it, it, was, it came in a really cool part of my life because I was studying the history of this covers. Because you literally go through historical landmarks like the Angkor Wat and all that stuff. And it really gives you, like, I guess you could say, like a historical perspective on everything. It's really, really interesting because ultimately this trilogy takes place on Earth. Spoiler. And then the one that wrapped up the whole trilogy was Terra Nigma. And uh, I, this is a reproduction box and I have a reproduction card in there because I, this is back when I was still playing with reproductions. And um, despite the stance, I would like to get a Japanese version. So it's legit. But I kind of like the fact that I have the trilogy box. Um, so I'm kind of an impasse with that. Now, the irony of the whole thing is that Terranigma is my least favorite out of the three. And I do think it's because by the time I finally played it, I watched so many reviews on it. I was put on this pedestal. It could never, ever hit that desired playability for me. 
There's no way. Still a really, really good game. If you ask me out of the trilogy, which is my favorite Illusion of Gaia, but that's also Rose Tinted Glasses. Super Castlevania 4. This is a box complete version. Box and manual were purchased separately. The manual I got for 10 bucks at Too Many Games a few years ago, and the card is my childhood copy. Many of you guys know this is my favorite Castlevania game. Um, I was introduced to Simon Belmont because of Captain N. Then I found out Simon Belmont is nothing like that. Um, but at the same time, I just, I love this art style. And I love the fact that with Bloodstained, they got the same artist to return. Um, I think he's super talented. I think this game has some outstanding music. And um, I, as much as I love the Symphony of the Night style, something about this game, which I honestly didn't realize, it's a remake of the first game. So the first game has been remade like four times. But the challenge is right you can whip on steps you can do this whole wiggly wiggly thing it's so much fun it's such a good game it's a it's a perennial classic and um i think limited run is going to do a physical copy of the castlevania collection for the switch i'm fucking buying it like i already have a digital but i'm doing it again this game is hands down one of the best games i've ever played to this day UN Squadron. Uh, this was this is really Area 88. It was localized to UN Squadron. I got this box for 12 bucks on eBay, and I think I got the game for like 12 at uh, or 10 or something like that from um, GameStop. It's a really good shooter, but unfortunately, I really suck at this one. So I haven't really progressed much. I think I only made it to like the third stage. Super Mario RPG, this is a box complete copy, not the prettiest. I had essentially found this at Book Off for like $30. Uh, and I just grabbed it, I figured let me take it home, I'll ask questions later, I don't give a shit. Everything was legit, they just didn't know what it was. Alright, now this is more of a weird subset, which I feel like I have to explain. So, we're almost done. So it reaches a point for me uh, when it does come to collecting and Super Nintendo and everything. I love Enix. I think Enix made some very strange games, <laughs> to say the least, on the Super Nintendo. Uh, some very archaic games, some very punishing games, some games that children should not play because they don't make any damn sense. But at the same time, I love the fact that, you know, there's like an Enix subset on the Super Nintendo. So as a little challenge to myself, I wanted to at least get them all boxed and complete. Now, Evo is not going to happen uh, for obvious reasons. I rented it as a kid and I fucking hated it. But it, due to price, it's just, it's just not going to happen. But I do have the extremely sun-faded version of Seventh Saga. Act Razor 1 and Act Razor 2. Act Razor 1, I'll say, is probably a better game. But I originally learned about that on Nick Arcade. Act Razor 2 is fine. Um, still doesn't beat the first and Soul Seraph, which is like a spiritual successor thing on the PSN on the PSN eh. Brain Lord, this game is a dickhead I got this in too many games with some hardcore negotiating <laughs> Paladin's Quest this game is this game is not that good um, to say the least also some hardcore negotiating at um, Too Many Games. I think I literally told the guy nobody's going to buy this shitty game except me. And then he sold it to me. It's a little damaged, but still. Robotrek. This game... Sorry. This game is very strange. Uh, it's a, Basically, it's like a Pokemon robot building game. That's really the best way I can put it. it it's very, it's very silly. It, but it's also really, really fun. Fucking course, I forgot one. Luffy 2, I bought the box off of Sukuper on YouTube, if you know who that is. And then the final game, Secret of Evermore. And I saved this one for last because A, the artwork looks great. And um, I lucked out on this one. Um, this particular game I purchased off of eBay several years ago uh, from somebody I guess that unfortunately may have hit hard times and was just doing a fire sale of everything. So I bought this. And I think it was like $35 shipped and I receive it and it just said box, box and game. And I was like, all right, that's cool. That's all I need. It has, it has the poster, it has the manual, 
It has the inserts. It literally has everything. Even it has a post-it note on it with some notes. And I'm not taking it out because once again, this box is, it's in much better condition, but the flaps have definitely seen better days. I think the person lived in a very humid climate from what I remember because I had to dry this box out a little bit. Uh, not because there was water damage. It just literally felt like it was gonna go in my hands if I mishandled it anymore. Whew. All right, so that's the Super Nintendo collection. Um, I can finally put all this crap away because I've been literally building it up for the past few days on the desk uh, just so I could talk about it. Now, on to, I guess, the other part of the, of the show is pickups. And uh, we actually do have a pickup. That is, sorry about that. Uh, that is Cat Quest 1 and 2, the Possum Pack. These are very silly action RPGs. Um, I played the first one digitally. I thought it was really fun. And then I was going to get the second one, but then they said this pack. So I just opted to get that. And then um, this, I'm not sure what I'm doing with it yet. Uh, I did get a copy of Void Terrarium from NIS. This is the, the art style. And I think it's the same director as the person who did Hotel Nikki and Yomawari, which I think look gorgeous, which is why I picked this up. It seems like it's more of a um, roguelike pet sim thing which may or may not be good i'm not necessarily sure um but we'll see i haven't i haven't opened it yet because i haven't decided if i want to keep it or not um i, it, I think i think if i remember that was probably one of the last ones i got with my gamers club unlocked there's still a few i know um the avengers beta came out comes out today i'm not even trying I, impressions make me sad anyway games i finished uh i finished atelier asia or Aisha, as I was calling it, on the Switch. Um, I am now officially in the Dust Trilogy. Uh, it just took several years of me having finished the Harlan Trilogy. Uh, I have to say, the Switch version does have some frame rate drops, because I got the triple pack uh, from PlayAsia. But I think it's based on the Vita version, because it has DX and all that extra stuff. So I wasn't sure if it was like they took the PS3 guts and then threw the Vita shit on top of it, or if they just took the Vita guts and just ported it over. Because there are areas where there's frame drops, they're not debilitating or anything, but it's kind of like, why is the Switch struggling with it? The Switch struggles with a lot. But <laughs> certain things, I'm like, why is it struggling with this? As for the game itself, uh, it's an Atelier game. You're Ultimately, you're not really saving the day. It's more slice of life than anything. And it does that very well. Unfortunately, I just, I wasn't super into the characters in this one. Uh, I liked Ernie, I liked Aisha, I liked, um, I liked, uh, Regina, and that was pretty much it. Um, it just seemed very formulaic, and I think this was around the time they started to come out on, like, an annual basis, so I may start to see some of that fatigue, but from what I understand, uh, Eska and Loggy are definitely a much, is definitely a much better game, but we'll see once I get to it. Also finished, um... <laughs> Groundhog Day, like Father Like Son, a VR adventure game from Tequila Works, the guys who did Sexy Brutal, and I think they also did Guacamelee. This acts as a sequel to Groundhog Day. And if you don't know, Groundhog Day is like one of my favorite movies of all time, besides me being a huge Bill Murray fan. As a sequel to a movie that literally came out so many years ago, I think this does a decent job. I just wish that they didn't make Phil, Bill Murray's Phil, like, god i'll just say because they make him like i mean ultimately he the, the whole purpose of him getting stuck in this time loop is to teach him a lesson and because it's like father like son you can imagine his kid gets stuck in a time loop too and um it's very self-aware but the way they talk about phil senior it, it kind of makes it like he never did a wrong thing in his life ever since groundhog day which i think is a load of horse shit but the cool thing about this game is that they literally give you as much of Poxitani as they could. You can go to the diner, you can go to the hotel. Um, you, every day starts out with the song. You know, I'm not going to say what it is or sing it because then I'll get whatever the fuck it is YouTube does. But it's VR and it's also floating hands VR. So you can pick up the alarm clock and throw it every morning like Bill Murray did. You can interact with people the same way Bill Murray did. I think uh, the guy who played... Um, the insurance salesman is the same actor, <clears throat> or at least it sounds like him. But here's the thing, though. With this game, because they it is not live action, they basically make cartoony versions of the characters, and they're super deformed. A little alarming. 
uh, when you know the film and you know the characters and you know the actors and actresses because they look, for the most part, nothing like them. Uh, they look like them, yes, in appearance, but it, something seems inherently wrong. Uh, Phil Singer does not look like Bill Murray. Now, maybe they couldn't do it. For all I know, that's probably the case. Uh, he doesn't reprise his voice, obviously, because he's a busy man and he's too busy doing Garfield. But um, the, the game itself is actually really fun. Uh, there's a series of VR mini games, as these things do. But it's lengthy. It's not a tech demo. There's a full beginning, middle, and end to the story. Um, and I think if you're into coming-of-age stories, this is a good one to pick up and play. Really, really fun. There's a physical copy out in UK and PAL territories. So you can pick it up over there, or you can just download on PSN. I think they dropped the price. I think it's like 20 bucks or something. The physical cost me, I think, after exchange rate and shipping was like 24 but really really fun i really enjoyed it and it was like maybe six or seven hours and i still didn't see every location in Puxatawney. now right now i'm playing two games i'm playing uh warhammer 40k space marine on steam this is a third person shooter a la gears of war minus you know the cover mechanic thing super fun I don't know why I slept on this as long as I did. It's it's actually really, really competent. Um, a great use of the IP. You feel powerful as um, an ultramarine, and that's really all I could say about it. It doesn't seem like it's that long, because right now I'm on chapter six, and that's about after six hours of gameplay. But the story's, I, I mean, it's an action movie story. I'll, I'll put it that way. But um, in terms of the combat, you know, you get some melee stuff. You can swing your ax or your buzzsaw. Uh, third-person gunplay, of course, because this is around the mid-ish 2000s, of course, you're going to have to pick up a turret rifle and walk around with it. They're going to put you in a plane. You're going to have to shoot stuff down. Of course, you're going to have all that. But honestly, it's a really fun... If you're in for, like, I would say, like, a popcorn action movie thing, this is a game to play. And then finally, I'm playing Chasm, which is a Metroid-style game. I'm playing it on the Switch. Now, here's the thing with this one. The dungeons are procedurally generated, from what I understand. And traditionally, I really fucking hate procedurally generated shit. Because eventually, the algorithm has to repeat itself, and everything just loops and loops and loops. You jump here, 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 five rooms later, you jump here, 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 ten rooms later, here, here, here. And eventually, you just know exactly what to do. But this also randomizes the locations of the power-ups, from what I understand. So, you're not really playing the same game twice, and in the case of some puzzles, it randomizes the results. So you can't just openly use a walkthrough, you actually have to look at the environment. That part is really cool. And so far, I am really enjoying it after about three hours, and we'll see how I feel about at the six hour mark. But for the moment, I think it's a very good Metroid style game. Is it the best one I've played recently? No. Do I think it's better than Hollow Knight? Yes. And uh, I think that's all. If you guys want to see another collection, uh, put it down below. Um, I th I don't know how long this is going to be, but I have a feeling it's going to be bad. Um, do bear in mind that it does take me a while to put these out <laughs> because I literally have to go digging through things. But if you want to see one, I'm ha I've already seen somebody said they want to see the Vita collection. That's going to take me a while, I can tell you, because once I finish them, I put them away. But um, let me know, and if we can do it, we can do it. I'll see you all in the next one.